What's going on, everybody? Welcome, episode 572 of the Talking Friars podcast and YouTube show. Ben Fadden with you here. It is March 13th, 2024, the final day of Padres spring training in Peoria, Arizona. I thought today's show was going to be about who's on the roster, who's not making that trip to South Korea, Seoul, South Korea for the Padres season opener. There's two exhibition games. I guess we'll talk about that but in a much different way than I thought. Dylan Cease is the newest Padre. Padres acquired Dylan Cease from the Chicago White Sox. A.J. Preller, we know that he is known for the big splashes. Seems like he's addicted to the big splashes, the sexy moves, and he did it again. You know, if, if this does not work out and he ends up getting fired, well, He did it the way that he always has. And you can't say that he didn't go down swinging, right? But wow. Uh, Of of course, of course, the news breaks while I'm stuck in traffic. You know, that's so I had an hour drive home today from from work and news breaks. And so sorry for the delayed reaction, but now you can get it here. If you want to join the show, click that link. That's pinned up at the top of the chat. I will get to the live chat as well. Um, The comments, I try to get back to as many people as I can. If you have comments, questions, if you're watching this on replay, feel free to put your thoughts on this move in the comments as well. But just to recap, to start off here, the Padres, they acquired Dylan Cease. Nobody else going from the White Sox to the Padres. The Padres give up quite a package. They give up. Samuel Savala, they give up Yairo Ariarte, they give up Drew Thorpe, and they give up Steven Wilson. And yes, it hurts. Giving up Steven Wilson could have been a high leverage guy for the Padres this year. That sucks. Giving up Savala had some upside, could be a major league roster piece in the future. That sucks. Giving up Ariarte and Thorpe coming off of the spring trainings that they just had, seeing how well that they did. That sucks. But you know what doesn't suck? Getting Dylan Cease. And this is how I feel right now. Right now, how I feel is comparable to how I felt at the time of the Juan Soto deal. I know it was two different times, but with Juan Soto, the Padres, they gave up Robert Hassel, James Wood. They gave up a lot of talent. Mackenzie Gore, C.J. Abrams, um, Yarlan Susanna, Luke Voigt. It's like, man, yeah, that hurts. But you know what? They got Juan freaking Soto. And so, you know what? Hey, they swung, and I appreciate them swinging. And in order to hit a home run, you have to swing the bat. And so at least they tried. It didn't work out, but at least they tried, right? They didn't win a World Series. So therefore, like it didn't work out in my opinion. But this trade here, part of the Soto package they got back, trading him to the Yankees, Thorpe, right? They end up getting Dylan Cease back in this deal. But anyway, getting to comparing, right, Soto, that trade, how I felt then to how I feel now, a lot of talent given up in that national Soto trade back in 2022. And here, yeah, it sucks giving up Drew Thorpe. It sucks giving up Ariarte. I would have liked to see how those guys would have pitched for the Padres in the next few years. But who's going to be pitching for the Padres in the next couple of years? Dylan Cease who placed second in the Cy Young in 2022. This is a guy that gives you innings. If the recent track record is going to be like the truth on what is going to happen here in this Padres tenure, this is a guy that is right up there with Joe Musgrove and you Darvish in this rotation. Some would say Dylan Cease is definitely the ace. He is the number one guy in this rotation. I don't really care what the order is right now. What I know is that the Padres, they probably have a better shot at making a run in the postseason now as compared to a a few hours ago, compared to 24 hours ago. They feel more like a playoff team now than they did 24 hours ago. There's no doubt about that. 
because, sure, there's questions about the lineup, but there's talent in the lineup. There's guys that can carry that lineup if they have good seasons. There's guys in that bullpen. There's still talent, even without Steven Wilson. There is talent in that bullpen that can help close down games and be locked down. In the rotation, it was Darvish, it was Musgrove, and then it was, we'll see what we get. Michael King, there's talent there, but just like Seth Lugo going into last season, it wasn't clear if it was going to be super successful, him moving to the rotation full-time. Johnny Brito, Randy Vasquez, Matt Waldron, Pedro Avila. Eh, what were they going to give? Matt Waldron, it looked like he was going to be the fifth starter on opening or on the opening day roster. But now that's not going to happen. You would think it. You think it'd be Johnny Brito. Would Waldron have been able to be that dominant in the regular season consistently? Start in and start out like he was pretty much this spring in Cactus League. He pitched his butt off. Like props to him. Uh, but I mean, what's what's his path now to making this roster? It's injuries, performing well in the minors if he doesn't make the opening day roster and Brito doesn't perform well. Like it might be hard for Waldron to get a lot of playing time with this Padres team now. He just did all he could. So it's not his fault. It's AJ's fault because AJ went out and got Dylan Cease. And obviously, nothing against Matt Waldron. We'd rather have Dylan Cease in this rotation than have Matt Waldron be in this rotation. Because if you think about it, that's what it is. So you look at past teams in baseball that go win the World Series, right? Most of the time, at least the ones that stick out in my head, they've got a big three, or at least teams that make a run. They have a big three in that rotation. I mean, just right off the bat, I immediately think of the 2019 Nationals with Steven Strasburg, who was pitching the games of his life there in October, with Max Scherzer and with Patrick Corbin. They had Anibal Sanchez as well, but that one sticks out there. The Phillies with Nola and Wheeler at the top of it. And then Ranger Suarez has pitched well at times for them as well. You know, so I I could go through the Boston Red Sox. I could go through the Houston Astros, right? You look at their rotation um, in the past with Garrett Cole and Justin Verlander. And, and recently, guys that may not be like their number one, but they're still important to their team, no doubt about it. Um, it's... Starting pitching is so important, and I'm not saying that Dylan Cease is going to be amazing for the Padres. He might not, but on paper, all I can do right now is react to what has Cease done most recently, how many innings does he provide, how many innings might he provide, how many starts might he provide, and that's something that wasn't much of a guarantee on paper going into this season as it is now. Who knew we, we still don't know how many innings Michael King is going to give. We don't know how many innings Johnny Brito is going to give. Or before the cease trade, how long was Matt Waldron going to last in this rotation? But on paper, you've got Darvish and Musgrove. Musgrove is healthy. Darvish seems healthy. Both guys have had some positive things this spring. I know it was a little bit rocky for Musgrove to start it, but there's that. You add cease to this. I mean, the last three seasons for Dylan Cease have been at least 30 starts, at least 32 starts, 32 starts in 21, 32 starts in 22, 33 starts in 23. In his last three years, 526 and two-thirds innings. ERA plus of 121, so 21% above league average. The walks, I, that's already been brought up as a little bit of an issue, but Blake Snow had some walks and he just won the Cy Young. And Dylan Cease, he gives you more innings. He gives you more starts consistently than Blake Snow. Blake Snow had a heck of a year this past year, and it sucked to lose him if he's going to pitch like that. But he was not as consistent as Dylan Cease has been the last three seasons. If, he's, if, if Cease is going to give a sub-4 ERA to the Padres, give us 30 plus starts, give us 180 innings, be a top three starter, be a top two starter, whatever it may be. This is the right message to send to the Padres fan base. No doubt about that. I mean, I think you got to like the Padres chances of making the postseason now better than you did 24 hours ago. And I was one that did not like 
that the Padres raise t- season ticket prices. They're decreasing payroll. They trade Juan Soto. They don't bring back Blake Snell, Nick Martinez, Michael Waka, Seth Lugo, question marks in other areas of the roster. I've been critical of this team. But with this Dylan Cease move, I give props to A.J. Preller and the Padres front office ownership if they were the ones that had to green light this. That said, we may not be spending a ton of money in free agency, but we are still going to show the fans that we are committed to building a playoff contending team here in San Diego. You can make the argument that they were a playoff contender if things went right, and they they might not make the postseason. It's baseball. We saw last year. You know, the most talented team Blake Snell's ever going to play on. He said that himself. They didn't make the postseason. So, wackier things have happened. But on paper, this is a huge move, a move that needed to be made for the Padres, a move that I did not think was going to be made. They're leaving for Seoul, South Korea here tonight. I didn't think another big addition was going to come. And boy, does this count as a big addition. So, I'm excited about it. Now, I think it's okay to be like ouch that 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 return that chicago got that sucks that that hurts but like i said earlier you're getting dylan sees and i want to win right now how many and john's waiting here um we were having a conversation the other day about like how long can they how many years can you waste a manny machado in his prime xander bogart's in his prime fernando Maybe he hasn't even hit his prime yet, but we get you get what I'm saying. Like he's Fernando Tatis Jr., Joe Musgrove in his prime, Darvish probably not in his prime, but he's getting older. How many more years can you waste of this much talent on your team? This core, right? Jake Cronenworth, who knows how long a prime of Jake Cronenworth is going to last with this contract? Ha Sung Kim last year, I would think, in San Diego at least under contract, last year under contract. Are we going to waste this year again after wasting 2023 and having a failure of a season in 2023? And the Padres front office said, well, we're we're trying not to be wasting this season by going out and improving this rotation, a rotation that will still have question marks with health, as does every rotation and back end. What innings will they provide? How will that work? But Dylan Cease should ease a little bit of Padre fans' um, worriness, if that's a word, worriness. It should ease their concerns a little bit about this rotation on paper. And that's all I can go off of. I, I, I don't have, I don't know if you guys know this, but I don't have a magic crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen in June if someone gets hurt, you know, like it's right now on paper. This is an exciting, uh, an exciting move. I am in a good mood. Um, I was still going to be in a good mood either way because it's the start of the baseball season. And finally, okay, these spring training games, let's get these. Uh, I was just tired of it. Uh, I'm finally done. And this is March 13th. I mean, usually the Padres would be playing a couple more weeks of these games. I mean, thank goodness. I was going to be excited anyway at 3 a.m. in Seoul. And Dylan Cease, I-, I wouldn't think that he would be pitching in those games. But the thought that, okay, there's another big guy in this rotation, it makes you excited. I like the Padres being able to go toe-to-toe with the Dodgers, at least pitching-wise, front three in the rotation, Glass now against Darvish, Yamamoto against Musgrove. Who would it, would it be? Is Bueller healthy? Bueller against Dylan Cease or a Bobby Miller against Dylan Cease? I like that. I like that a lot more than Michael King against that. And, you know, like the the Padres bringing in someone into a lineup, you know how that lengthens the lineup, this lengthens the rotation and it, Matt Waldron, who knows, maybe he's an impactful piece in the bullpen or he makes some spot starts and he's an impactful piece. But like I said earlier, we would all rather have Dylan Cease in this rotation than Matt Waldron as your five, Johnny Brito as your four. You'd rather have Brito Waldron as your five, whoever's pitching good, he can be your five instead of having to have both guys in the rotation and not have Dylan C. So I'd love to know Padres fans' thoughts on this. I'd like to think that I'm the most interactive Padre fan YouTube show out there. I invite Padres fans to join the show. 
directly with me and give your thoughts and I'll go through the comments as well. I think this is an exciting day um, in San Diego Padres history. Now, Juan Soto acquiring him, that was an exciting day in Padres history. How'd that turn out? Not the way that we wanted. There was that postseason run, but I think we can all agree. Ultimately, it did not turn out the way that we wanted. They didn't win the NL pennant. They didn't win the World Series. So this may not end up working out, but I still appreciate the big swing. This is another big swing from AJ Preller. And you can't hit a home run if you don't swing, right? So I'm excited. I'm excited for this uh, stat nerd baseball. He joined here first. So I just want to give him the floor, him or her, uh, the floor. Stat nerd baseball. Thanks so much for joining the show. Hey, thank you for letting me come on. Of course. So, uh, um, funny story. I was actually at work when I got the news about Dylan Cease. So naturally, you know, when you're at work and you get a big trade like this, you're like, what am I going to do? So obviously, you know, there's a fist bump under the desk and everything. So it's mm -hmm. pretty exciting. I mean, I saw the return after the fact. It, it's conflicting because, you know, when you go on Twitter, you more or less see Padres Twitter reactions before you see the actual facts. So it was a little hard to gauge, but I think it's a good move. Because if you look at it this way, I saw this I saw this tweet from somebody, I don't remember from who. In a way, you traded Juan Soto to get Dylan Cease. You saved twenty million dollars on your salary. I don't want to say salary cap, but towards the CBT, you're saving about twenty million dollars. Yep. And you still have Johnny Brito, you still have Randy Vasquez, you still have some pieces from that trade. And your starting pitching depth is honestly in one of the best places it's been over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I agree. That that's that's a good point. Um, I think, yeah, Padres fans obviously on social media it's very reactionary. Um, and what I would say to that point about the Padres trading Soto for Dylan Cease, I mean they 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 gave up a lot more than just Drew Thorpe in this deal. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely understand part of that point. And I put out this tweet as well um, earlier today before I went live here. Like, I think that Padres fans, we would have been way happier about this Soto trade um, at that time if Preller would have just told us he was getting cease a few months later. I think that would have been like, okay, well, at least he went out and got a dominant starting pitcher, you know, or someone that can For definitely sure. be a dominant starting pitcher. Because at the time, I don't yeah. know how you feel about this, but at the time, it wasn't looking great. And sure, you like the – I was excited about the upside of a Michael King, of Johnny Brito, Randy Vasquez, Drew Thorpe, who obviously isn't with the organization anymore. Nasty changeup from what I've seen um, in spring training. I would have loved to see what he would have been in a Padre uniform, but I want to win. Like I, As a Padres fan, I don't want to wait for, oh, let's see what happens. No, if you have the opportunity to get Dylan Cease, then get Dylan Cease. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah. about it. And I I think, yeah. Let, let me know your thoughts on this. the The off season for AJ, I I was not a fan of the off season from AJ, but this is still part of the off season because the season hasn't started yet. This is a huge move, and I'm not saying that this was a widely successful off season for AJ. I still don't believe that. But there was there was good and there was bad. I think the good and the bad has been a little bit more uh, leveled out here. Where before this deal, the bad was outweighing the good, I think. If I may say one last little thing about the, the trade, I'm sorry, I can't. Because the uh, connection's kind of spotty. No, you're but, good. Um, can, can you still hear me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. The one thing I will say about this trade is, uh, okay, because I was actually working on a video about what a potential trade would look like. And I thought the White Sox were going to fail this because they overplayed their hand in leverage. That's a 20 minute video script. I'm going to have to scrap now. So. Yep. <laughs> but that's the life, I guess. But, you know, I'm just glad they made a trade for starting pitching. I wasn't panicking because I had faith in guys like Vasquez and Brito, but this is something more of a safety net because it's not as much of a gamble. But, uh, that's yeah, all I yeah, got right sure. now. I'll probably go and record a take on this, but thanks for letting me come on. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Thanks so much. Yeah, I, I think 
that that's a good point about the gamble part. I mean, because Brito, Vasquez, there's talent there, but they haven't shown it at the big league level for three straight seasons and placed second in the Cy Young in 2022 and had a sub four ERA in 2021 and, you know, made 30 plus starts each of the last three seasons. You know, like they, there's upside. I like that the Padres still were able to keep these guys in this deal. And by the way, another thing about this deal, the Padres were able to keep Jackson Merrill. They kept Ethan Salas. They kept Robbie Snelling. They kept Dylan Lesko. They kept Head. Like they've kept their top guys. Obviously, DeVry that they signed internationally. There's young talent. They kept Adam Mazur. Let's not forget about him. They kept Jacob Marcy. They kept Graham Pauly. You could say, like, this is a, a job well done. It's easy to spin this thing positively um, in the Padres' direction, in A.J. Preller's favor um, here. I mean, I, I think Preller, he knew what guys he was not going to be getting rid of. And I think the White Sox, if they didn't want to waste time with A.J., they knew who to not ask for. Maybe they did ask for those guys, and A.J. just laughed in their face. But AJ, I'll, I'm definitely going to give you applause here because at least this sends a message that we're still trying to go win. I'm not giving up the top young talent that we believe in the most where the Juan Soto deal, we know AJ Preller, he did not want to give up James Wood. He didn't want to give up Robert Hassel the third. Obviously, it's a trade, so you're getting Juan Soto and, you're, and you got Josh Bell. But like James Wood, you really didn't want to give up James Wood. Here, who are the guys that AJ really didn't want to give up that he gave ended up giving up in this deal? Is there anyone that he really didn't want to give up? Sure, you could point to Drew Thorpe because he just acquired him in a big piece in that Soto deal to the Yankees. But in, I'm talking about Salas, Merrill, guys like that. He didn't give up any of those guys. Where at the time of the Soto deal to the Nationals, James Wood was one of those guys I think that Padres fans collectively was like, don't give up that guy. It was, I think we were good with Abrams because of the whole shortstop situation, but who were those guys at the time? It was James Wood. It was probably Robert Hassel III. Those were two guys that stuck out. Both guys had to go noticing the, you know, the, the, the ability to go win with Juan Soto, obviously, like that was, I think, super, it was obviously super enticing for AJ and the Padres. But I think the the key guys that AJ sees long-term in this organization weren't given up. Maybe Thorpe, but think of this rotation that could be in 2025, because Cease will be under control, King will be under control, Musgrove, Darvin, I mean, they're not going to have enough Maybe maybe some of those top guys end up getting dealt, but you could have a 2025 20, rotation that is Darvish, Musgrove, Cease, Snelling, and Lesko. Or you take Lesko out and you trade him for a top bat, and you have Michael King in the rotation. You move Michael King to the bullpen to make the bullpen stronger, or Lesko goes to the bullpen, or whoever. Goes to the bullpen. Adam Mazur comes up. Ryan Berger, he's still there. Kevin Copps. Like, there's there's arms here that are still going to be here in the future. The Cease and King contracts, two years for them. It allows AJ time to go get more pitching and have those guys develop in the system as well if he's still going to be here. So, I, there's, like I said moments ago, there's a lot of different aspects that I look at really, really, uh, positively from this deal if people want to talk about the negative we can definitely hit on the negative and and get more into that um but yeah i think this again this is this was the right move to make because the padres they should be trying to win right now and i think that's what was frustrating about this offseason was there was money we thought there was money to be spent there was definitely room under the cbt holes on the roster you see the Dodgers and other teams improving. And what were the Padres doing? They were just sitting there. So I'm happy that, you know, A.J. Preller, he, he departed 
from watching every spring training game and got on the phone and and you know made made a impactful move here. What's up, John? Man, I am I'm better than I was 24 hours ago. Honestly, I'll tell you that I much. Didn't, I, I didn't see this coming. I I I would definitely not before opening day. I I thought the Padres they like what they're seeing in spring training from these young guys. Let's just see it out. They don't yeah. want to be in that same Yankees camp of being desperate and then have to give up too much. But I mean, AJ he gave up a lot here. I'm, but you know he also like I said didn't give up Merrill, didn't give up Salas, Pauly, any of those those big guys, Lesko, Snelling, any of yeah. those guys. Yeah, and I mean I <clears throat> I think we've talked about it on this show before is that. Um, you know, everyone's kind of, I've been kind of scoping around the, you know, what the reaction is, whatever. And people are pretty mad that, or some people are mad at least that uh, we give up a lot of prospects for Dylan Cease. But I mean, that is exactly what they are. They are prospects, right? We have no idea how they are. Obviously, Stephen Wilson does hurt. I'm not going to lie. That definitely hurts, especially given the bullpen status. I mean, it's a good mm -hmm. bullpen, but you know, Stephen Wilson was definitely a part of it. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, they're just prospects, guys. You know, we don't know if they're actually going to work out or not uh, in the MLB. Um, but, I mean, Dylan Cease, I mean, that is quite a grab. And, I mean, yeah, especially for Padres fans. I mean, I mean, for the longest time, it seemed like all throughout spring training, Padres fans were kind of like ex slowly accepting that they were, that this is the team we got, right? Yeah. That this is the team. Full of prospects. We're going to give the young guys chances. Jackson Merrill is going to be our starting center fielder. And that's that. You know, we're just going to roll the dice and see what happens from here. Um, but I'm glad to see that Prowler still has some moves up his sleeves. Given given the, the limited payroll he has and the limited, uh, I guess, information that we know about what's going on with the Padres organization and their payroll and TV deals and whatnot. But... I mean, it's a great day, honestly. I mean, as a Padre fan, how could you not celebrate uh, this this trade? I mean, this is a big moment, um, and I think, uh, yeah, like I think the earlier guest said, it's like, yeah, we got we trade away Juan Soto to get Dylan Cease. I mean, it's it's one of those one of those moments where we just have to realize that uh, we are back, baby. We're back, you know. Hey, look at that! It's awesome, you know. It's wonderful. So before this deal. Did you think this team was a playoff team? And now do you think they're definitely a playoff team or are you still, well, I mean, after last year, I'm not going to say they're definitely a playoff team. I mean, listen, I mean, baseball is a, uh, it's a brutal sport. I'll tell you that much. Uh, if you, you know, if you have, if you have some uh, expectations coming in, <laughs> well, the baseball gods will say, no, 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 no. You got to earn it. No, 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 not at all. Um, I mean, if anybody thought at the beginning of the year that the Arizona Diamondbacks were going to be in the, the World Series, I would have said, you're absolutely crazy. There's no freaking way. I mean, maybe third place, you know, maybe. Uh, but I mean, I think my expectation, I think I was much like Padre fans where I was just accepting that, you know, like, listen, we got our young guys coming in. It's they're you know, they're doing showing signs of life in spring training. I mean, they might have an up and down year. Uh, a lot would have to go right, I think, in terms of the Padres uh, clicking at the right time, um, the big guys really kind of uh, showing up and having really good MVP seasons. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I just was kind of like, you know, there has to be a lot that goes right in order for them to get a wild card spot. Now, I think with Dylan Cease, I mean, we needed an any needers guy. That's primarily what we needed. I think at the end of the day, we needed a guy who just, much like Blake Snell, just eight innings and Dylan Cease fits that mold perfectly. Um, and, you know, I, I think that, you know, it, it, he's obviously he had a little bit of a down year and stuff like that. And his walk rates are high, but I mean, our defense is better than the white Sox, And also, I mean, it does give me a little bit of confidence to know that, you know, if one of our starting pitchers gets injured, then there is a solid rotational fill in spot, you know, Waldron or, um, you know, Brito or, you know, there's all these guys that we can rely on um, to fill in if we need them. And that is what I feel like was lacking 24 hours ago is depth really, um, which is great. I don't, it's awesome. Honestly, how could you not be happy? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I was just, this thought just popped in my head, you know, Corbin Burns goes to the, uh, not, not, to the Milwaukee Brewers, from the Brewers to the Baltimore Orioles earlier this offseason. One year of control. 
ceased two years of control. When the Burns trade happened, I'm sure I'm not the only Padre fan. I sat here and was like, Padres could have done that. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. But you get two years of Dylan Cease. Did you have to give up more? Yeah, you did. But it still gives you that certainty, obviously, assuming that and maybe I shouldn't assume this, but assuming that there's no like Tommy John surgery happening or anything, it gives you 2025 with another frontline starter where with Corbin Burns, it's another Blake Snell year where, okay, yep, great starter, but he's gonna, just going to go sign somewhere else in free agency. This can kick the the can down on that another year, um, and, and I think that's that's important for sure, especially you don't know what you're going to get out of Lesko Snelling in 2025. Are they going to be pitching in 25 at the beginning of the year? Will it take them some time to transition? Mm -hmm. Lesko has had uh, – I think he's had Tommy John, right? He's had some injury issues. Um, like, what is that transition going to be like? So, sure, there's no guarantees with Cease himself, but there's definitely no guarantees with the young guys coming up. We can like them all we want, but there's no guarantees on what they're going to be. So, yeah, it's it's insurance, and it lengthens that rotation. It makes it seem like the Padres have more depth um, than, obviously, they did 24 hours ago. Um, and I'm not saying makes it seem like they don't have the depth, but like they have, it, it feels actually like they have depth now instead of just names because you have Vasquez, Avila, Waldron, who aren't going, none of them are going to be in the rotation. It's going to be Brito probably as the five. And then you have a lot of different options to choose from if something doesn't work out or if something happens in the rotation where before Cease, you have two veteran pitchers who have pitched well, obviously, in the past. Health, they're healthy, but there, there's still some question marks probably there. King, don't know about him as a starter. And then you got Brito, a young guy. Who knows what you were going to get? Waldron, who knows what you're going to get consistency-wise? And so, yeah, just I, I think it, it eases some concerns for Padres fans. And what do you think about the postseason point that I made earlier about having that big three King might make it a big four and that would be amazing. Or someone gets hurt and it's a big three if King pitches well. Uh, but having a big three, if you don't include King for now, I think that gives Padres fans more confidence as well. And that that's got to make Ruben Niebla, Mike Schilt pretty happy that what AJ did there. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, it, you know, that's, that's the playoffs for you is, is a, is a test of depth. I think um, uh, really that, Having Dylan Cease, I mean, even if he has, say, a four ERA kind of season or whatever, he still is a good pitcher, can eat a lot of innings, can get a couple strikeouts as well. So um, I really think that it's a really good uh, – This the, the pros outweigh the cons, I think, overall uh, for this trade. Um, and we all knew, I think, even before this whole rumor mill was started again, because we all knew that Dylan Cease was on the trading block, but it kind of went up, flared up, and then went down a little bit. So – you know, I think we all knew that it was going to be a haul for sure. And I think in terms of, you know, the rumor mill that was kind of going around these last few days in terms of the Yankees, or the Rangers and stuff like that, it honestly made sense that the Padres had the better shot, given the fact that we had one of the top farm systems in the league right now. AJ Preller is no stranger and he is a creature of habit to sell off the farm system in, in order for uh, big name talent immediately. And he can do it when his job's on the line. Oh yeah, especially when his job's on this line. Exactly. It also it didn't see it to me. It didn't seem very AJ Preller like to not do nothing. You know, like I mean, he just and just sit by. And I mean, like you know, obviously these are more speculations on whether his job is on the line. I think we all know it might be on the line, but you know, it's it doesn't seem characteristic of him not to do nothing. Um, and especially, I mean, and also kind of piggybacking off your point about the pitchers going like Corbin Burns or whatever, we felt that same way about certain outfielders as well. You know, like why are you letting these cheap guys who could easily fill in a roster spot, lefty batters, um, you know, why are you letting these guys go? And they're super cheap as well. I mean, that being said, uh, my brother pointed this out is that AJ Preller likes to trade in batches. So I would not be surprised if there's some more trades or something else cooking uh on the horizon i don't want to speculate here but uh i just don't think that aj preller is 
quite done. Uh, we'll see. I don't know, honestly. But it's a great day. Let's celebrate. Yeah. Come on, guys. I wonder I wonder how Tommy Pham feels about this. Would he like to have Dylan Cease as a teammate? Would – who else? Listen. Well, it's Michael A. Taylor I'm not that high on because I know they're running with Jackson Merrill, and you have his Ocar. If he could play center field if you need him to. Yeah. Um, there's other guys that can play center field. I don't mm -hmm. want to overpay for Michael A. Taylor. Uh, I don't think this affects uh, like Tommy Pham's like, all right, Padres, five mil. Here we go. Yep, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's that, but I think it makes the Padres definitely appealing to Tommy, if not if they weren't already. Yeah, and I mean, I was also kind of thinking in terms of um, obviously we have two years of control for Dylan Cease or whatever, but you know, my question is, is uh, you know about extensions and stuff like that. You know, what are the Padres going to be doing? um for extending Hassan Kim other players in the league or other players on the team as well um obviously jumping the gun we should be uh, excited for you know the fact that we got Dylan Cease for two years but you know it does bring up a you know obviously any acquisition kind of brings more questions and answers um for sure but um you know again we will see I would not be surprised uh if the guys on the I think the guys are on the plane right now to Korea so I wouldn't be surprised if they have no clue what's going on until they land and be like, oh, hey, look, we got another picture. That's great, you know? So, no, they, they've mean, got Wi Fi on that thing. <laughs> I think mean, Manny doesn't have Wi Fi on that thing. Him and Profar are going to be playing FIFA. I think the, the plane uh, leaves at like eight or something. But yeah, they, uh, uh, they probably are ecstatic about this, I would think. I mean, how, if you're Manny Machado, if you're Tatis, if you're Musgrove, if you're Darvish, if you're any of those big guys and you know that, well, we just wasted 2023. I don't know how many more years we have a, of a great chance of winning as with me in my prime as a big producer on this team. You see this come across. You've got to be happy because this improves your chances of making the postseason and then going on a run because you could have potentially a big three or a big four. I mean, you, you got to love this. Why should Manny Machado care about Samuel Zavala? Why should you Darvish care about that either? You know, yeah. Stephen Wilson, okay, you can make that case. But Robert Suarez still, Yuki Matsui, closing experience, Enyo De Los Santos, I mean, sure looks like he could be nasty. Wandy Peralta, Yankees fans like him. Um, it's usually a bad sign when the opposing fan base is like, yeah, go ahead, take him. No, the yeah. Yankees fans, they like Wandy Peralta. Jeremiah yeah. Estrada hasn't allowed a run. Tom Cosgrove, Wusuk Go. Remember, Luis Patino is still in this organization. We'll see what happens there. There's yeah. names. Adrian Morajon is still in this organization. Obviously, maybe Vasquez is in the bullpen, Avila, Waldron. So, yes, Wilson, I'm not saying that that is not a loss. That is that is a loss for sure. It's a bummer. It's a I, bummer. Liked, I liked having Steven Wilson in this bullpen. But you'll take it for Dylan Cease. You will. Yeah, small price to pay. It's a, It is a business. You know, we got to trade something to get something good. Um, and again, I think, uh, I'm actually also kind of curious, I'm like, what is the process? Like, you know, does AJ Prello just send out a mass text and saying like, we got cease or does he, you know, talk to these guys individually, especially guys who are going to be mostly affected by, by this thing, you know, does he talk to Walter? I mean, Steven Wilson, holy cow. The guy probably packed his whole bedroom and now he's just going to wherever Camelback ranch where the white Sox camp is. I know he gets to be I, teammates again with Tim Hill. Like he's, maybe he's happy about that, but. You go from the Padres going, you're about to go to South Korea to play the Dodgers on opening day. And now you got to be a Chicago White Sox. I know. I mean, Wilson. That, that, that's nothing against their fan base. Definitely nothing. That, but that, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, it does. It is such, certainly a bummer. But, you know, I think <laughs> I like to imagine AJ Prellis running the tarmac as Stephen Wilson's like, uh, not you. <laughs> sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, ooh, you're actually going to come back, come back, come home with me, buddy. You know? So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I do feel bad for Stephen Wilson. I mean, I like Stephen Wilson. He was a good guy, you know, uh, and we had a lot of control for him as well. But, uh, you know, again, you got to give up a haul in order to get something big. And Dylan Cease is definitely something big. And while he may not be an ace on our team, I mean, he definitely is uh, an ace in a lot of other team respects. And so, it's again, it's just more pitching. We need, you know, more pitching the better. It's just great. I mean, this is – I would honestly credit our pitching staff for having the records we do. I mean, obviously we didn't make the playoffs and all that stuff, but 
I mean, our pitching has always been solid and we know that we need depth in pitching. I think every team knows that they just aren't able to acquire it as much as uh, we are, you know? Um, and, you know, we'll see. I mean, again, we'll see how Dylan Cease does. I mean, I know he had an off year, but again, I'm very happy with this trade. It is a really great, got good option. Um, and yeah, thank goodness AJ Preller did something. I mean, I was beginning to worry. I'm like, dude, really? Your, your, your job's on the line and you're not going to do something? Okay, we'll see. Yeah, Roll the I, dice. I was thinking like that was a, is that an ownership thing? Like if he didn't do anything, was that ownership saying, well, all of these other big splashes, we haven't gotten there yet. Let's, we're, we're demanding you to run with these young players. And I was thinking like, are they saying, we'll let you go through your contract in 2026, but you don't trade these young guys. We're going to see how all these young guys do at the big league level with you developing them. And then we'll see what happens Um, yeah. because these, these big splashes, I mean, it, ha it hasn't gotten the Padres. Mm, excuse me. Wow. Choke I know. Here. I'm get, I know it's, it's a big emotional day for me too, Ben. Don't uh, worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Haven't gotten, haven't gotten the Padres to the promised land. Um, yeah. But Hey, this, this is what AJ Preller does. And I respect him for it. Like, if you're going to go out, go out swinging big, and it's another big swing, no doubt about that. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, again, I think it is definitely a love-hate relationship with A.J. Preller. You know, I, I think, I think you know, there is definitely a lot of – there is a lot of moments where we can definitely point to A.J. Preller's faults. But, man, oh, man, you know, just like Al, Al Pacino is like when they – and I'm out, they just pull me back in, you know, so we'll see. I don't know. But that being said, um, I got to say, you guys said earlier, uh, you are the most interactive uh, commentator on the on the Padres uh, community as a whole. So I appreciate the fact that I can come on here and, you know, spew my piece and everything like that. So, you know, keep up the fantastic work, Ben. You're honestly, uh, keep it going, honestly. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. Very kind words. All right. Yeah, if anyone else wants to join the show, Feel free, click that link pinned up at the top of the chat. I'm just another Padres fan. I love talking with other Padres fans, and I will do that more um, in a moment. We'll go to the chat. I see a ton of comments, hundreds of comments um, in the chat, almost 200 people watching here live. So I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate um, all of you for taking the time. I don't know if some White Sox fans are in here. Maybe you are because you're depressed that Dylan Cease is not a White Sox, or maybe you're in here because you're happy because you knew this was coming and you like what you got back. And if you're a White Sox fan, I think you should like what you got back in this deal. I don't know why the White Sox traded for Steven Wilson, to be honest. I mean, you're in the AL Central. You're not trying to contend. Just go get another prospect from the Padres, not Steven Wilson. But okay. Um, you got Drew Thorpe. This guy can be a mid-rotation, maybe number two starter for your Chicago White Sox, White Sox fans. If anyone is in here, that could be a good guy. Iriarte, man, he's got some nasty stuff. Electric, he was going to be in the big leagues for this Padres team at some point in 2024. I think you can make the argument, same thing goes there with Drew Thorpe. And you're getting Zavala, he could be a starting outfielder for you in the future. If you're a White Sox fan, I think you got to like it. Maybe maybe you like it more than maybe what you should because you're looking at how the Soto trade turned out and the guys that the Nats got back and how good that's looking right now for the Nationals. But I'm, I'm not going to limit your happiness, White Sox fans. I mean, that's you got a pretty darn good return. There's a reason why the White Sox made this deal because of the return that they got. So yeah, it's going to it's going to stink seeing some of these guys be in the big leagues. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get a talent like Dylan Cease, you know? It hurts a little bit, but it also feels good at the same time. You know, it's maybe this is a dumb comparison, but I'll make it anyway. When you buy tickets to a sporting event and you're like, "Oh, wow, that's that's a lot of money there, but it's a sporting event that you really care about. And you know, like, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a great event to go to. I need to go to this event. You're happy that you're there, but at the same time, you're like, man, that, that took a lot out of my wallet. 
I kind of compare that, the, the Soto deal with the Nats and this deal for Dylan Cease from the Chicago White Sox. All right, quick break, and then I will get to the chat, and we'll get to anyone that wants to come on. You can click that link pinned up at the top of the chat. But here's a message about Gaglione Bros. Check out Gaglione Bros' famous cheesesteaks and garlic fries on Friars Road. You can visit their website, gaglionebros.com, for their entire menu and enjoy their cheesesteaks and fries at Petco Park and Snapdragon Stadium as well. All right. I'm just looking on social media, doing a quick check here to see if I've missed anything. It looks like the Padres, they are headed. They're either headed to the airport or they have already gotten to the airport and they are leaving. Arizona's on the same time as we are. Oh, breaking news. Pod, well, not breaking news. We already know about it. But the Padres have just made the Dylan Cease trade official. Let's see what A.J. Preller's statement is. Because I think that A.J. puts a statement in here. Let's see if my phone wants to load. Looks good in a Padre uniform, I'll say that. No, no quote from AJ. He's he, he's busy going to South Korea. But here is some of the details about Cease, courtesy of the Padres. Cease, 28, set a career high with 33 starts in 2023 and struck out 214 batters, notching his third consecutive season with both 30-plus starts and 200-plus strikeouts. That's huge for the Padres. You want that. And you know that Cease has a good defense behind him as well. So if he puts the ball, if, if guys put the ball in play, it's not the end of the world. Just don't, don't do um, hard contact, right? And what, what kind of hitter's park is guaranteed rate field where the White Sox play? Probably more friendly than Petco, I would imagine. So Cease may even have better numbers at Petco Park than he did in some seasons with the Chicago White Sox. Um, overall, the six foot two, two hundred pound righty went seven and nine with a four five eight ERA, including a three four eight ERA versus National League opponents. Cease against the Dodgers. Who get that popcorn ready? That's going to be a fun watch. Um, and then let's see. Over five major league seasons, Cease has compiled a forty three and forty or forty three and thirty five record. 3.83 ERA, over 650 innings, a 131 whip, 228 opponents average, 11.7 baseball reference war, almost 800 strikeouts to just 294 walks in 123 career starts. I mean, I'd like the walks to be less. I, I'm I'm looking at Dylan Cease's game logs right now, and I look I, I see walks. Now the month of September wasn't terrible. But there's there's some five walk games in there. Holy cow! There was a seven walk game against the New York Yankees. He got the win in that game. What the heck? Um, let's see. Yeah, there there's plenty of three walk games. There's four walk games. There's five walk games that I'm seeing here. So we're used to that though with Blake Snell, right? Cease, as long as he gets out of those jams, like that's what I care about, obviously. Snell was able to get out of the out of, out of those jams really well last year. I don't think he was going to do that again. He's not going to have as good of a year as he did last year in any year of this next contract or these next couple contracts because he might just land a one-year deal because Blake, he's just trying to find a team right now. I mean, who is going to pay? The New York Yankees, everyone wants to link the Yankees to Blake Snell, but they have to pay like 110%, I think, because of their financial situation. So 40 mil is more like, I was hearing someone on the radio, it was more like 84 mil or something. Like it's, it's a one-year deal with Blake Snow for the Yankees doesn't make a whole lot of sense, even if Cole gets hurt. So I don't see that app. I don't know where Blake is going to sign. I still don't think it's going to be the Padres. He's not going to come to the Padres for $5 million. Hey, Cassis joined. Let me join in this rotation and be a super rotation. And I'll come for five mil. Like, this is still a time where he wants to cash out. 
I just don't know what team is going to do that. Who is going to give Blake a long contract? I don't know if a team will give Blake a long-term contract. It might just be a one-year thing. Um, I, it would not be, it's not going to be the Padres, though. I've never thought this offseason that it was going to be the Padres, and I, I still don't think that, especially after acquiring Dylan Cease. I mean, and this rotation is still, it's, it's in pretty good shape right now, I would say, on paper which is why they play the games. Dylan Cease will wear number 84 for the San Diego Padres. All right, let's get to the chat. I want to remind some, or all of the audience, about some of the great partners of the show. Underdog Fantasy, a 100% deposit match up to $100. I'm sure there will be some Dylan Cease enticing higher, lower, Strikeout props um, there on Underdog Fantasy. Breaking T, hundred or excuse me, they will not give you a deposit match when you spend money on their site. But what they will do is give you a great T-shirt, great sweatshirts, Padres, Aztecs, Wave. Shout out to San Diego State's women's team, by the way. They're playing in the Mountain West Conference Tournament Championship game tonight um, against UNLV. It's going to be a tough test, but this is their first one. Um, since I think 2013. So congratulations to them. They've been fun to watch over these last couple of nights in Las Vegas. San Diego Wave, their season gets started on the 23rd. Challenge Cup on Friday at Gotham. What a matchup that's going to be. Uh, by the way, buy one, get one free. San Diego Wave tickets. Go to my social media, not at Talking Friars, but at Ben Fadden SD, my, my uh, personal or non-Padres Twitter account. And I have a link there posted. Click that link, buy one, get one free to the home opener on the 23rd. Uh, let's pack the snap. K Kansas City Current facing San Diego Wave FC. Obviously, the Wave trying to go win a championship for the city of San Diego after winning the Shield last year and coming up short in the playoffs. Um, let's see here. Going to the chat. Super Chats, by the way, they get priority. It makes it very easy for me to see them. Separates it into a different category. I definitely appreciate everyone that takes the time to do that. JD's Third says, we just went from 75 wins to 79 LFGSD. So JD's Third is not very high on this Padres team. I would say like they're, they were probably, what, a 80, 81 win team if some things went right for the Padres, right? Maybe 83, 84, if almost everything went right. I, I was not like 90, 100 win high on the Padres before Cease, and I'm still not that with Dylan Cease, but I could see the Padres with Dylan Cease. If things go well, if the offense bounces back, if guys can stay healthy, if Cease is Dylan Cease, if Musgrove is 2022 Joe Musgrove, if he's the majority of 2023 Musgrove when he was on the mound, let's remember how dominant he was when he was on the mound. If Darvish can bounce back, and those guys can be healthy, bullpen solid. Mike Schilt has that positive influence. That relationship with AJ Preller is good. I could see this Padres team winning 85 to 87 games, probably, with this move. I mean, Dylan Cease, I don't think he's Corbin Burns. I'd rather have Corbin Burns over Dylan Cease if like, I could have him for the rest of my life, but... It's two years of control of Dylan Cease. Only it only would have been one of Corbin Burns. I totally forgot what I was going to be looking up. Oh, that's what I was looking up. Um, his his B WAR by season. Now B WAR it's lower usually than Fangraphs, I believe. Like Cease, if he delivers a 2022 season, that's 6.4 wins right there, according to baseball reference. Last year was less than three. 2021 was three wins. So let's say, let's say if you thought this Padres team was a 84 win team or 82 win team, those three games could get you into the postseason. I mean, the Padres, they missed the postseason by two games last year. So things have to go right. And then you have Dylan Cease add that on there. And what is this Padres team? If they're playing good baseball in in uh, at the end of October going into postseason baseball, at the end of September as well, and they're obviously in postseason positioning, then this team can go on a run like they did in 2022. 
there's a lot of the same pieces still there. And uh, there's talent in this rotation. I think there's talent all around this club. There's still some holes. I'm not saying that they're, you know, the the best team ever. I'm not saying they're the Atlanta Braves. I'm not saying they're the Dodgers. The Dodgers have a little bit of um, some problems there as well. But this this is an improved team. And if you're a Padres fan, I think you should be excited about what happened today because the Padres, they made a move to improve their club this year, these next couple of years, to try to win now. And that's what their message was. I wasn't buying it totally because of their actions. You know, actions speak louder than words. But this action here, I mean, this action here does not say, no, we're trying to win in 2027, not in 2024. No, this action says we're, we're trying to go build a postseason contender, make a run in the postseason. We're trying to do that right now with this roster that we have and this addition that we're making. We're not going to go spend big in free agency, but we don't have to. We make a trade with our prospects, use our farm system to our advantage. And that's what AJ has done. His big skill is identifying talent, right? Scouting. Hasn't always been able to develop those guys, his farm system, to be at the big league level and excel with the Padres at the major league level. Very few. But he has used those guys to go get guys that have a track record of already succeeding at the big league level. Like, that's his way. It's, I'm going to be good at talent identification at the high school, college level, and then I'll be good at identification at the big league level as well. And those two things can help each other to accomplish our goal. Now, that hasn't happened yet. Um, if things don't work out this year, I mean, why not make a change with AJ? I'm by no means saying that AJ Peller deserves to continue to have his job if things like don't work out in 2024. But I don't think this is a day to spend too much time on like bashing AJ. I can say that there's still holes on the roster and I'm not, I'm still not 100% approval, if that makes sense, of AJ's offseason, but it makes it better. It, it makes it more balanced, the good and the bad from this offseason. All right. Let's continue going through the chat. By the way, SeatGeek code Talking Friars to help you out there. $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Maybe Dylan C's first start at Petco Park is what you're wanting what you're uh, waiting for and you want to go see. I'm sure that will be a hot ticket. Padres, they sold out their season tickets. I thought they already had, like I thought that was the whole point of the wait list, but I guess they were selling some more. Um, was it Gallagher Square? Are there season tickets in Gallagher Square? I think they were selling more of that or it was uh, upper deck season tickets that they were selling. All right, anyway, let's get to the chat. I know that there's a lot of comments. I'm going to try to get through people's comments here. I'm probably not going to be able, sorry for the burp there. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to get to everybody's comment, but I'll try to get to the ones that stand out to me. Christopher says, this was unexpected to say the least. For sure, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting, I was listening to John and Jim as I was driving home, and I was not expecting that they had, uh, who'd they have on? Um, I could see his face, uh, former writer, um, for the Padres or about the Padres covers the Padres now for the New York times, Scott Miller, I think they were having him on and in the middle of the, the interview, Jeff Passon dropped the bomb. I didn't see it cause I was driving, but I heard it from them and I was like, wow. Okay. But I was as I was in traffic, I was just waiting the whole time for the, the return. I didn't know what the return was. And so, I mean, I had a reaction, but I didn't like fully fist pump, like, heck yeah. I, the Juan Soto trade, when that happened, I, I did that. I was ecstatic. Here I was waiting for, okay, well, who are they giving up? You know, it is a pitcher, not Juan Soto. I know it's still in seats, like that's good, but who are they going to give up? And it sucks some of the pieces that they gave up, but they're trying to win now. This is a move that demonstrates that. Um, I still wish that they would go sign an outfielder. I still think that they have room. 
Um, we know that they had room to go add to payroll, obviously, from where they were at, because Cease does add to payroll. Most of the guys that they gave up were, were prospects, right? Stephen Wilson was the guy with the, the major league salary. Uh, but yeah, it was, to get back to your comment, Christopher, it, it was unexpected for sure, to say the least, on my end of things. Maybe some expected it, but I don't know how you could have expected it with how spring training was going and that the Padres were leaving to, to South Korea, you know, in a matter of hours. Uh, Darth Raven says 2023 stats, seven wins, nine losses, 33 starts, four, five, eight ERA. Why did we get this guy? Was AJ that worried about King Brito and Waldron being starting pitchers for the Padres? I think that you get this guy because you see that he's making those 33 starts. Sure, he had a sub uh, five ERA, not sub three or sub two, um, sub four. It wasn't the best year. I understand that. But at the same time, there were still moments where it was like, still talent there. I mean, he still struck out over 200 guys. Like the strikeout stuff is there. Him pitching at Petco Park may help him out. I would imagine it would help him out. And he did have some blow up outings, like six earned runs, four innings of work, seven earned runs. But the ERA obviously gets, you know, bloated when that happens. But for as many outings where he had, you know, five earned runs, eight earned runs allowed, seven earned runs, he also had five and a third innings, one earned run, seven innings, no runs, 11 punch outs against the Red Sox last um, September. Um, five innings, one run, six innings, one run. Six innings, one run. Six innings, two runs. Five and a third, two runs. Six innings, one run. Five and a third, one run. Um, a lot of double-digit strikeout games, obviously. So there's some bad, but there's also good as well. It's, I, I think the ERA gets inflated when you have those blow-up outings, obviously. Um, but let's be clear, Dylan Cease is still one of the elite pitchers in baseball. He's not the best. He's not Garrett Cole. I don't think he's Corbin Burns either. But he is definitely a, a welcomed addition to this Padres rotation. And there are a ton of teams that would love to have Dylan Cease be in their rotation. Uh, let's see here. Continuing to go through the chat. AJ says, have had an hour of looking up YouTube for analysis on this and getting annoyed with amateur clown shows when I want straightforward information because I'm tired. Looking forward to this from Talking Friars. Thank you, AJ. I don't know um, how professional I sound. I mean, I'm a Padres fan. I don't hide that. Um, I don't know how much straightforward information that you've gotten from this show so far, but hopefully you've got some straightforward information. Um, if you want straightforward information in terms of stats for Dylan Cease, we can look at, I think the last three years is a good sample size. 32 starts, 32 starts, 33 starts. I'm going from 2021 to 2023, respectively. Um, three war, 6.4 war, 2.4 war. 165 and two-thirds innings, 184 innings, 177 innings, 226 strikeouts, 227 strikeouts, 214 strikeouts. ERA plus, 100 is league average, 112, 180, and then 97. So really good 2022 ERA plus, and then not that great ERA plus in 2023. It's still a welcomed addition to this rotation. No doubt about that. His whip was his highest that it's been since 2020, but that was a short season, 12 starts, 34 walks there in 2020 for him. Um, maybe that's concerning if you're a Padres fan, but there are plenty of other options out there that are worse than Dylan Cease at $8 million. That's another straightforward thing that I failed to mention. My bad. 
$8 million, I believe, is what he's getting paid for 2024. And then arbitration last year before free agency um, in 2025. So that's what we got there. Dylan Cease here to the Padres. The headliner that we are giving up, out of all of those guys, I'd probably say it's Drew Thorpe. Although Iriarte is right there. I mean, Zavala is right there. I mean, he's a good player too, or could be. From what I've seen, from what I've, the stats that I've looked at, it looks like he could be a good talent as well, and he's been performing well um, in the minors thus far. Steven Wilson, it's a, now for the White Sox, like that's, if I'm, the, if I'm a White Sox fan, I don't understand why I acquired Steven Wilson. Like, what am I doing? What is my team doing? We're not trying to win. Why are you acquiring a major league talent? Just go get another prospect. That might end up turning to be a really good guy. Like Fernando Tatis Jr. ended up turning into something. Like Trey Turner ended up turning into something. In that player to be named later trade, obviously. Padres going to the Nats there with Trey Turner. You never know. But why acquire Steven Wilson if you're the White Sox? I don't understand that. But maybe they flip him. Or they acquire him so that they can trade him before the trade deadline. Yeah, I would agree with this. A legit fan says Thorpe Iriarte hurt the most. He does have potential. But like Jim Callis, I think is he I think he his evaluation was like maybe it was Jonathan Mayo, I forget who. Probably mid rotation starter. That's someone that you'd like to have. But if you're trying to win right now and you can get multiple years of Dylan Cease, that's a guy that could be your number one. And you could have Musgrove be your two and Darvish be your three or you know, flip whatever whatever order. Thorpe is the unproven at the big league level, was not ready. Maybe some think he was ready, but Padres, he was not going to be in the rotation opening day. Um, Dylan Cease obviously would be ready to go from day one. So there you go. Charlie says, does anybody agree that we give too much every time we trade for somebody and we ask for too less? I mean, the Padres got Dylan Cease in this deal. What, what do you, you want it? Do you want it? Do you want them to, they probably asked for Luis Robert Jr. <laughs> and the White Sox probably laughed in their face. Just like if the White Sox asked the Padres for Ethan Salas or Jackson Merrill, the Padres laughed in their face. Um, so look, they got Dylan Cease. They were going to have to give up talent. They didn't have to give up Jackson Merrill. They didn't have to give up Ethan Salas. They didn't have to give up Head. They didn't have to give up Homer Bush Jr. I'm trying to run through a list of other prospects. They didn't have to give up um, Snelling. They didn't have to give up Lesko. Sure, they gave up Thorpe. They gave up their five, six, and seven. Like that hurts, but... When you put it into perspective, they kept their number one, number two, number three, number four, number eight, number nine, number 10, number 11, number 12, number 13, number 14, number 15, number 16, number 17, 18, 19, 20 out of their top 20 prospects. They kept a lot of these guys that could be a good part in their future. Graham Pauly, opening day roster guy, kept him. Jackson Merrill, starting center fielder. Kept him. Nathan Martarella could be a power bat, lefty bat in the future. Kept him. Dylan Head could be future center fielder of the future. Kept him. Jacob Marcy kept him. It's for me, it's easy to look at this from the positive view, for sure. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And that's going to suck, just like it's going to suck seeing James Wood hit bombs for the Nats. But as a Padres fan, I think we can appreciate when our GM, in this case, obviously, A.J. Preller for almost a decade now, when our GM swings big, because there's other small, I sound like Eric Grubner here, there's other markets that don't have that, that don't make those huge moves, because they want to keep their prospects and just see how they do so that they don't have to pay them any money and all that. But Preller, he goes for the stars. And it's entertaining. As someone that loves talking about this team, it's entertaining having A.J. Preller as the GM, as the president of baseball operations for this team. No doubt about that. I'd rather have a boring GM with the World Series, but it's hard to win a World Series as well. If things don't work out in 2024, I'm totally okay with A.J. Preller being fired. Right now, though, 
I'll give him another round of applause um, for swinging big and acquiring someone that could be very impactful to this Padres team in the next couple of years. All right, continuing with the chat here. Devin says the rotation is going to be one filthy rotation. I would correct that with the rotation could be one filthy rotation. Because last year, I mean, we had all the talent in the world on paper. And then what happened? So I think last year is like a, a lesson for the rest of my life that you don't say that this is going to be a nasty rotation. Don't say that this is going to be a nasty team. Just say they, they could be because <laughs> you never know. Baseball, it can be mean to you if you don't have urgency, you're a little too cocky like some Padres were last year, in my opinion. Brian Perez says huge overpay. Uh, Brian, I disagree. I think a huge overpay would have been including Jackson Merrill, Ethan Salas in this deal. I think that would have been a big overpay. If you put uh, Pauly, Marcy, in addition to these guys in the deal, I, I feel like that's an overpay. I, you were going to have to give up one of Lesko, Snelling, Thorpe, and these prospect lists might not mean anything to the Padres, but According to the list, they kept the top two of the three. Snelling, Lesko, Thorpe. They kept Snelling and Lesko. And Thorpe went. They kept Salas, M Merrill, who were ranked higher than um, Zavala. They kept Mazer. They didn't have to give up Mazer and Iriarte. You know, Padres, they got King and Thorpe. Yankees didn't want to give up those guys. But in order to get Juan Soto, you had to give up those guys. The Padres, I'm sure they didn't want to give up Thorpe. But you got to do it if you want Dylan Cease. I got the White Sox, they had the leverage there. Um, Eddie says, thank God the Padres did something like this. Their starting rotation is now filthy, and they will be a playoff team. Great move. They could be filthy. I'm okay with you guys saying they will be filthy. The rotation is now filthy. I'm okay with you guys saying that, but for me... I'm sorry. Last year was a, a big lesson. <laughs> it could be filthy. On paper, I guess we could say on paper it's filthy. The potential on paper is, is filthy. What is this rotation going to be? Well, right now, Darvish, Musgrove, and I'm putting Cease third because of just Darvish and Musgrove already being put in as game one and game two. So, Darvish game one, Musgrove game two, Cease, King, and then uh, who am I blanking on? Johnny Brito. That's the five that I would do. Hey. You could go Waldron, but I think you want Brito starting innings with the, the stuff that he has, the velocity that he can have. Um, I mean, he was a big part in that Juan Soto trade, right? So I think you you make him a starter. And if it doesn't work, then you put him in the bullpen. I think the transition to the bullpen is easier from being a starter than if you're going from the bullpen, if you're Brito, to the rotation. You know, he's built up. Keep him in the rotation. See what you got from him. You've got four guys that you believe in, for sure. Um, let's see here. Padres support group says there's a reason that no one has signed Blake Snell. There is, but there's probably a couple. I, I really wonder where he's going to go. I mean, one of the reasons is money, right? Obviously, they can't agree on that. Who knows what proposals are going Scott Boris's way and being sent towards Blake Snell and his direction. What's the Angels offer? The Giants say their offseason's done, but is it really? I don't think the Yankees are going to land Blake Snell. I don't know how much sense that makes for the Yankees in terms of like financially. So I don't know where he's going to land. Um, I don't think it would be the Dodgers. I, I sure hope not. I mean, it seems like they can just have as much money they can spend on as many players as they want. Um, let's see here. Matt Janela is in the chat. 
What's up, Matt? Good pitching beats good hitting. They needed a starter. Preller got one. Game on. Yeah. That, that is a good point. And I think that some Padres fans will agree with that, Matt, and be like, yep, good pitching beats good hitting. We have good pitching at the top of this rotation, the majority of this rotation now, if they can stay healthy and, you know, pitch to their, their track record for the most part, right? Then there's upside and King and some other guys. And the Padres, they have star talent in the lineup that you would think if it's a tight pitching duel, that talent can, you know, bop one. I'm not saying the Dodgers don't have the talent to do that. They do. But the Padres also have it as well. Um, Kirsten already thinking ahead to next offseason. If the Padres can get Roki Sasaki next offseason with Cease, watch out. Yeah, they're going to be going after Sasaki. I think this is Otani and Otani situation where Sasaki's not going to cost 325 mil like Yamamoto. It's going to be like a there's going to be a maximum to how much money he can earn. So, in that way, that should be an advantage to the Padres. Maybe, ha maybe having Darvish is an advantage, but, I mean, the Dodgers having Yamamoto and Otani, maybe that's an advantage for the Dodgers more than the Padres. Who knows? Sure seems like the Padres are going to have a lot of attention on Roki Sasaki, a lot of focus come next offseason. And this season when they're scouting him, obviously. They will probably be a finalist for Sasaki, for sure. If Preller has the ability to sign Sasaki or whoever the GM's going to be, they will be a finalist, I would think. The reason why we didn't hear anything about Otani or Yamamoto was because that was never realistic based on where the Padres were at financially. Sasaki, I think, could be realistic. Or would be realistic. Is there more news here about who has made the roster? I saw in the chat someone said Azokar made the roster. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not seeing anything pop up on my notifications, but yeah, I think right now, I mean, we can... There's still almost 200 people in here, so I appreciate everyone for being here. I've been talking for over an hour. Can't believe you're not tired of me talking already. Um, roster right now, what does the roster look like? I put out uh, a tweet yesterday, a graphic of what I think the opening day roster would be right now. Obviously, just tear that thing up because Dylan Cease just got added and that moved around some things. And I was kind of thinking more, not Korea, but the home opener and like, the longevity of the season. If I'm going Korea roster, let me go to that graphic that I made so I can at least reference those names so I don't miss anyone. Do, 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 do. Okay. So rotation, I would go Darvish, Musgrove. That's it for Korea because you only need two starters. And then I would have King be in the bullpen. I would have... Probably maybe Cease be in the bullpen. I don't know if you want his first appearance to be coming out of the bullpen, but he could come in after Darvish and just shut the door on the Dodgers if the Padres have the lead. I would think Cease is on the opening day roster in Korea, just in case you want to use him. Like, that's a pretty good weapon to have. Um, Brito, you could put him in the bullpen as well, but he might start exhibition games, him and Waldron. Uh, or maybe C starts an exhibition game just to, because they're good with the bullpen that they have. They don't want Cease to pitch out of the bullpen in one game when he's a starter. I think that they're just going to go with Darvish and Musgrove in the first two games anyway to start those games. Uh, Bullpen-wise, Suarez, Matsui, De Los Santos, um, Wandy Peralta, Cosgrove, Go, and then that gives me room for, I already said Brito, right? Brito, King. What, one more? Because I only have two in the rotation because it's two games in Korea. Maybe they throw... Or Estrada. They probably would go... I mean, Avila, though, he pitches well out of the bullpen, but they have they have King to do the piggyback for one of those games if it's not going well with the starter. And then they could just use the bullpen all out in the other game. 
So maybe Avila doesn't make the opening day roster, and I'm talking about Korea. I don't think Waldron makes it, especially after this trade. Um, catchers, I've got Campion, Higgy, Infield, Manny, Kim, Bogarts, Cronoworth, Pauly, and Wade. I don't have that changing. Uh, maybe Eggy should make it. Um, I guess the question is, do the Padres, would they rather have a third catcher with Sullivan as a lefty, or would they rather have Eggy and take Mercado off because maybe they think Mercado and Zokar, they're too similar of a player. Both can pinch run if you need them to. Both can go play outfield positions. But what I was thinking was Tatis, Merrill, Profar as your starters. Profar, hopefully he's okay. He limped off today in that spring training game. I thought they should have just played their B players. I mean, come on, you're, you're going to Korea later in the day. Like, Do those guys really need those in-game at-bats against the freaking Oakland A's? Um, anyway, Tatis, Merrill, Profar, Azokar, Mercado, I just think the two games in Korea, do they need Eggy Rosario? Or would they rather have Wade, who can play anywhere almost? A lefty bat, Paulie, another lefty bat. He can start at third base. I guess it's the preference of would they rather have Eggy as their starting third baseman? Or would they rather have Paulie or Wade start at third? I think it would be Paulie. Um,. What's the chances of the Padres doing Machado, Kim, Bogarts, Cronoworth, Pauly, Wade, Rosario, Tatis, outfield Tatis, Merrill, Profar, Azokar, or Mercado? Just four outfielders instead of five, and then they have three, four, five, six, seven infielders with two catchers. Maybe they have three catchers, but they count Sullivan as an infielder as well because he can play a little bit of first if they need him to. But Pauly fills that. It's going to be interesting, um, especially these two games in Korea, for sure, because they don't need all of those guys in the rotation. So that allows them to stack that bullpen with guys that might not be on the roster on the 28th. Like, I, I believe he said that to the media. Like, they're, they're not going to be forming the roster for the long run of the season. They're going to be forming the roster like it's those own two games by themselves, which they are. I know opening day gets played up a bunch by fans, but the Padres should be just looking at how can we win these two games? Not let's set our five rotation starters and have them be on the roster. No, if a bullpen guy is going to help you in games one and two, why have your five starter make the roster if you don't want him to start games? Why have him be on the roster if you're just going to waste that spot because he already pitched in those, those exhibition games, right? And that's obviously the smart thing to do. Ooh, news from Passat about the Brewers. Star closer Devin Williams, two stress fractures in his back. Expected to miss around three months. Holy cow. All right, well, that's a big bummer for former Padres manager Pat Murphy over there with the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, let's see here. Continuing to go along, I saw some comment about Musgrove being much better than a three. And then someone said, not 2023 Musgrove. I disagree with that. When Musgrove was on the mound, he pitched well for the majority of his time on the mound last year. Starting on that Yankee start, go look at his numbers. And I know in reality, like you can't just cancel out the bad starts. But since, I mean, the majority of his year, he pitched like an ace. He did not pitch like a three starter. Um, I'm looking that up right now. So he made one, two, three, four, five starts before that Yankee start, which weren't great. You know, he did go five innings, uh, no runs on May 7th, but he gave up four runs. He had a seven earned run outing against the Giants. Not great, but obviously there was some circumstances there that we wish weren't the case last year. So you got to judge those five out outings heavier than the 12 starts that he made to end his year before getting hurt, where he posted a 184 ERA, a 278 FIP, 231 opponent average, 593 opponent OPS, 314 opponent slug. That's better than a three starter to me. 
So I disagree with that. JD's third. Alfonso with the super chat. Thank you so much, Alfre Alfonso. Sorry. Alfredo. My bad. Apologies. Um, much appreciated. He says here, why not offer Snell a two-year contract, five mil this year, and 45 mil next year when the Padres avoid the luxury tax? That's not how this works, the luxury tax. Um, for those that don't know, if that was the case, let's say two years, 50 mil, the AAV would be 25 mil in a year. It doesn't matter that it's only five mil that you're paying him. You're actually paying. Him. What matters for the Padres, they want to stay under the CBT. The CBT takes, into, they take all of the AAV. So like Manny, he's not make his AAV is higher than what he's making this year. I think he did that to like offset the Hosmer contract. But in terms of luxury tax, you can't offset it. Like however much money you get, or unless you defer it like Otani and the Dodgers. Um, but if it's, if you're giving him $50 million over two years, it's 25 mil and the Padres don't have that room to stay under the CBT with that. So that's, I get your point and you're like, yeah, barely give him anything and then give him 45 mil next year. Why not? I get that thinking, but for baseball, that's not how it works for what matters to the Padres. And what matters to the Padres is staying under that 237 luxury tax number. Kirsten says, need to add an outfielder. I'd sure like to. Tommy, come on down. Um, Adam Duvall is an option as well. Yep, I am seeing that in the chat. I think Michael A. Taylor is the least likely of the three. Um, Dennis, I think Dennis Lynn put out the other day, was it last night? I'm trying to find that part that I think Dennis put out. No, Kevin. Sorry, Kevin Acey put out. This was a couple days ago. Said that the Padres remain engaged in conversations regarding veteran free agent outfielders Tommy Pham, Michael A. Taylor, and Adam Duvall, as well as others. So, still engaged in conversations. I imagine those conversations aren't very long right now because the Padres have a price and they're not going over it. Out of Taylor, Duvall, and Pham, Taylor's the least likely, I think, with Merrill playing every day in center. Um, I'd probably say Tommy Pham is the most likely with his relationship with Preller, knowing the Padres, um, the Schilt relationship as well, the need in left field. Or Adam Duv didn't he play center field a lot with the with the Red Sox? I don't know how much money Duval would get. Maybe Fam does get more money. But Fam's familiar with the Padres. Maybe that's what draw, draws him away from the Padres as well. But he probably, I hope he sees the Padres as a, a contending team. Um, let's see here. Going through the chat. Sorry for the podcast audience if that was like awkward silence. I was just reading from the chat. Devin says, Yamamoto isn't looking too hot in spring. Nearly an eight ERA. It's spring training, though. From what I've heard from everyone in baseball, like this guy's super talented, so I'm not going to like... Remember Shohei Otani? He sucked in spring training. And then what happened? He was Shohei Otani. So I'm not going to overreact to Yamamoto struggling. As much as I would like to laugh about that and be like, ha, Dodgers spent $325 million on this dude. He sucks, but I'm, I'm not, that's not how I feel. I'm not definitely, definitely not anywhere close to saying that. He will shove against the Padres at some point. He will, no doubt about that. And it's going to suck. But hopefully Dylan Cease also shoves against the Dodgers and then, you know, Tatis can hit a big bomb at Petco late in the game or something. And then Suarez can be a lockdown closer. I can't wait for baseball season. This, today, like, this really got me pumped up. Obviously, acquiring Dylan Cease, but, like, talking about a move that the Padres made, not just talking about spring training performances from a MLB.com or Padres.com video feed, but, like, no, 
what this team could be. Okay, Padres made a big move. What does this mean? It's it's exciting. And you look at the calendar. Okay, Padres, they are leaving for Peoria, or excuse me, leaving Peoria for Seoul, South Korea right now. Like that's that's awesome. Um, let's see here. Continuing to go through the chat. Sorry, I can't get to everyone. My laptop is not um, on never-ending power, but I'm trying to get to some of the points that stick out here. Yeah, Cease, by the way, I'm seeing talk about Cease, and of course he was going to leave. I mean, he got traded. He didn't leave, but um, I think he was talking to the media either today or yesterday. And he said that the White Sox GM was talking to Cease, letting him know, like, yeah, there's rumors out there about you being traded. So, like, once that happens, I'm like, okay, this deal's happening. I didn't know that before I made that video earlier this morning. Um, but, yeah, I, I saw that today after this trade had already went down. I'm like, well, of course he was going to get traded then. You don't. I don't. I haven't heard of a GM that warns a player. Yeah, you're going to hear these rumors, but don't worry, you're you're definitely not going anywhere. I haven't heard a GM do that. Now, I I think I've heard before people like do the courtesy of, hey, don't pay attention to those rumors. We'll find the best spot for you. Um, I just want to. I feel like the best thing is to get out in front of it and say, yeah, we are having conversations with other teams. Um, we got to do what's best for our, our organization. We know that. We are in rebuilding mode, and we want you to go be able to go, you know, be on a contender. You're just not, the, the timing just hasn't matched up for this franchise. I've heard about that before. Um, but once that's out of the bag, you're telling players about trade rumors, you're probably getting traded at some point. I didn't, I, I was not expecting it to be to the Padres later that day, but I'm excited about it. Katie asked, did we hear if Profar is seriously injured? We did not. I don't think he is. I did see an update that he walked off under his own power with not much of a limp. I want to say AJ Casaville put that out. Um, let's see here. Continuing to go through the chat. Calvin says, if we sign FAM, I think we're better than the D-backs. Interesting. I don't want to just instantly say that we would be. I got to give credit to the D-backs and what happened last year. And they did add Eduardo Rodriguez. They did add Eugenio Suarez. They added Jock Peterson. But would you rather have the lineup of Corbin Carroll, Ketel Marte, Gabriel Moreno, Christian Walker, Jock Peterson, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., Suarez, Alec Thomas, Perdomo, or would you rather have a lineup of Bogarts, Tatis, Cronenworth, Machado, Kim, Pauly, Camposano, Profar, Merrill? You combine those two lineups, holy cow, that's one heck of a lineup. I would probably roll with the track record of the Padres lineup, but D-backs fans would call me bias, and I'm not going to say that I'm not. D-backs fans might go with their lineup. Rotation-wise, does this addition of Dylan Cease put the Padres over the top of the D-backs? The D-backs have Gallon, Kelly, Rodriguez, and then Fought and Nelson. And there was talent with Fought and Nelson, but are they going to do that again in 2024? Where I think us Padres fans can say, well, we just added Dylan Cease, Musgrove's healthy, Darvish is healthy. Look how Musgrove pitched when he was healthy last year. Michael King, I mean, look at the upside there. Johnny Brito, I'll take the Padres over the D-backs. I, it, I think that's pretty close, the D-backs and the Padres rotations, at least as of now. I've taken the Padres bullpen over the D-backs bullpen. Maybe that's because these names aren't super well-known in the D-backs bullpen, but hey. I guess I fell for it. And that's that's me knowing the Padres more than the D-backs. So any D-backs fans in here, if you are in here, don't get mad. 
yes, I admit I am a little biased, and I know my team more than better than the than the D backs. But that is interesting. If you add Fam to this lineup, the lineup would be Bogarts. I'm not saying like in order, but Bogarts, Tatis, Cronenworth, Manny, Fam, Kim, Pauly, Camposano, Merrill. No disrespect to Jerickson Profar. I think he knows what his role should be on this team. I like that lineup with Fam in it more than Jerickson Profar. All right, continuing to go through the chat, I see a super chat here from George. Thank you so much, man. Says, here's my dream. Padres stand pat in the outfield and use the remaining payroll headroom to do an extension with Kim which they announce in Korea. Okay, that moment there would probably go viral. That would be pretty exciting. But doesn't that pretty much mean that, okay, your infield long-term is Manny at third, Kim at short, Bogarts at second, Cronenworth at first? But if you're moving Bogarts to second, doesn't that mean that you want him there long term. You're not moving Bogarts to second just to put him back at shortstop when he's a year older, are you? I think that this is the best defensive alignment in terms of middle infield. Kim at short. I'd rather him have him at short than Bogarts at short. I'm fine with Bogarts at second. I think that's fine. Cronenworth, he's more familiar at first base. Manny obviously great at third base when he is going to be healthy and ready to go playing third base. Um if Kim is extended, then you're committing to Merrill in the outfield, which might end up being okay. I think, I'll say this, looking at it from the positive view, the glass half full view, which is what I want to do today, extending Kim while you're adding more guaranteed money long-term to this infield, and everyone will be long-term on the infield. There are a lot of teams in baseball that would love to have that infield. That don't, right? They love to have those bats in the lineup, and they don't. So I like that. But I think that giving Kim a long-term deal, that hamstrings you a little bit still. You know, you have long-term contracts, and then you're adding another long-term contract, and there's no Cronenworth trade, like, in place. Maybe they do that, and maybe that would make a little bit more sense. But that's a lot of money, a lot of money to be spending on the infield, and. Who knows that at that time, that next off season, what will the Padres' areas of needs be, and will they be able to give a long-term contract to someone, to one of the best free agents out there, if that's the route that they want to go? But at the same time, you could say, well, Ben, you were just making the case that Merrill is here, Marcy is here, Paulie is here still, Martorella is here, um, Lesko, Snelling. Mazer, like these guys are here. So they won't need to give a big contract. Those guys will come up and make nothing. And so Kim will fit. And I guess you could be proven right on that as well. So it's, it's, I know I went, I, I flip flop there a little bit. I, I'm trying to give both sides there. And maybe I'm trying to talk myself into not giving Kim the extension. But if that did happen, the fan base would be excited. I think most fans would because he's a fan favorite. He's a good defensive infielder. I think he'll always have that. And he keeps getting better. So if, let's say, a Kim extension did happen, I'm probably not going to sit here and be mad about it. I, I would question about what does that mean for the future of other guys on the roster. But I would say, hey, it's another guy that you know that is going to be in the lineup, a fan favorite. He keeps getting better. And again, I'd be judging it off of like what I've seen so far from Kim in his big league career. And he keeps getting better. My viewpoint might change in the offseason if he has a bad year, you know. So I don't think you're alone, George, to to kind of put an end to that discussion there about Kim. I don't think you're alone. I think there's plenty of fans that want a Kim extension to get done. No doubt about that. Um, let's see here. Continuing to go through the chat, see if anything. Pops out to me here. Uh, I keep seeing some people asking about Profar. I don't think we know if Profar is okay, like super healthy. 
what we know is that he was able to walk off under his own power. So that's, that's good. That's encouraging. And there is time. If there's a time to have a minor injury like that, I guess it's now because there's time before that opening day. It's March 13th. They don't play till the 20th. So that there's time to get ready. He doesn't have to play in those exhibition games. If he doesn't need, if, if his health isn't good enough, I mean, I guess I'd rather have the injury at the beginning of spring training than the last day. But my point is, it's, it didn't happen, you know, when there's a night game or a, a day game tomorrow, right? Like, there's there's time for him to, to heal and get better. All right, continuing to go through the chat. just want to see if there's anything out there. JB says Preller shouldn't have signed Xander. That's another thing as well. Like Xander, you sign him to a long-term deal. Maybe that was Peter Scyther, his influence on that. Who knows? But you sign Bogarts. You're already moving him to second base. Who knows if you have the money to give Kim the extension. You have Cronenworth locked up, Manny locked up, Tatis locked up. Bogarts. How is this contract going to look? How is he going to age? If they win a World Series, I don't care what the contract looks like. You know, they won the World Series with him. Um, but yeah, it's a valid point because if they didn't sign Xander, Kim obviously would be at short, Cronenworth would be at second base, or maybe Kim would be at second and Merrill would be at short, and he, he wouldn't be in the outfield. But the Padres, they would have $280 million to go give to Snell or to go give to Jordan Montgomery or to go give, to, to be in that Yamamoto race, to have Juan Soto still be on the roster, potentially, to give Michael King an extension if that's if they wanted to do that early, um, to give Dylan Cease an extension and offer him a boatload of money right out of the gate, Atlanta Brave style, after they acquire someone, they give him an extension and he signs, you know? But because Bogarts is here, I mean, I, I like that he's willing to move to second base. I like that he is a baseball rat. Like, I love that. But yeah, it, it was not a move that was necessary. Like, big hole, go fill it. That wasn't the case. Um, when the Padres signed Xander Bogarts last offseason, we all know that. We've been through that so many times. All right. Last few comments. That I'm going to get to here tonight. Six one nine Cam says this is a typical AJ kind of move. Now, if he can get us a solid outfielder or DH, yeah, I mean that's the next thing, right? DH, I don't think that would happen. I think it's more outfield. That outfielder could DH if you need him to. Um, I don't know if that's going to come though. I think that the Padres might be okay with, you know what? We got Cease, huge trade. Let's just see how the dominoes fall here in the regular season. We can go make an addition before the deadline if we need to. We'll see what happens. Or maybe they're like, well, let's just see what happens because Pham doesn't want to come on our price tag. Duvall doesn't want to come on our price tag. And then April 15th comes around if they're not signed. And they're like, okay, I'll come to the Padres on your price tag. I, I want to come play baseball. I want to come make millions of dollars still, you know? Um, but in terms of like typical AJ kind of move, in terms of like shiny object, go trade for it. Yeah. I did think about that when I was in the car today. I, I thought about that. Like, yep, he's the next shiny object. And look, AJ trading farm system to, to acquire it. If it doesn't work out, that's going to be the, the narrative out there probably by some Padre fans, Preller haters who will you know, hate him regardless of whatever happens. Um, I like Preller for some of the things that he has done. I dislike Preller for some of the things that he has done. Um, if it doesn't work out, yeah, people will be able to have the argument like, maybe we should have saw what these young guys were instead of trading Drew Thorpe. Why'd they acquire a guy with a... Um, a year that was not like 2022. I'll put it that way. In 2023. 
why did they do that when he was just going to walk in two years anyway? You gave up Drew Thorpe, who would have six years of control. You gave up Iriarte, that would have six years of control. You gave up Zavala. You gave up a, a guy that could have been a high leverage reliever for you. But those will be easy to say in hindsight. And right now, just like I felt during the, the, the reaction to the Juan Soto trade, I'm sitting here saying, thank you for taking a big swing. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but I'm happy that that big swing was took because on paper, the Padres are not as good of a baseball team with Drew Thorpe sitting in the minor leagues, with Zavala sitting in the minor leagues, and not having Dylan Cease on their roster and having Matt Walton be the five and uh, Burrito be the four and King be relied upon as the three. Instead, now it's Darvish, Musgrove, Cease, and then you can lengthen the rotation and give you some some depth, actually, in terms of like excess of arms instead of the depth being, no, they're all competing for a rotation spot and who knows what they're going to be if they get that spot start, you know? Yeah, Randy, Tim, Tim says Randy Rosarena. That's an option that I have not thought about in a while. Yes, that's an option. I don't know if the Rays would do that, though, this close to the season. I guess it's not that close for other teams because their season starts on the 28th, which is more than two weeks away, when the Padres' season starts in less than a week. Or a week. Yeah, the 20th. Less than a week because it's 8 o'clock. Dang, it's 8 o'clock already. Jeez, time has flown by. Um, it's 8 o'clock right now, and the game's going to be at 3 a.m. in a week. But you get my point. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I'm interested in this as well, JB. I'd like to see how our closing pitching plays out without heater. I, I will as well, but I'm also interested in seeing, is it going to be a ninth inning only guy? Or is Suarez going to be the closer, but he makes it clear to Schilt, to Niebla, to Ben Fritz, the bullpen coach, to Preller. Like, hey, I I know I'm the closer, but if you need me for five outs, put me in the game. I want to make the postseason. I want to help this team win. If I'm the best guy for this spot, put me in and we can figure it out later. If I can't go five outs, I'll give you three. I'll give you the last two in the eighth and the first in the ninth, and then we'll figure it out and hope that the next guy can get two outs. Um, I wonder how that is going to play out. Is it going to be a ninth inning guy, or is it going to be you know pretty much who the closer is, but it's flexible and things can change in the middle of a game if you know lefties come up or a string of righties come up and Robert Suarez is available. Do they go the eighth inning or the seventh even? Like, how does that work? And part of that's probably going to be based on how does Yuki Matsui do? How is Anil De Los Santos doing? How is Tom Cosgrove doing? How are the other guys doing in that bullpen? Wandy Peralta, can the Padres trust those guys to pitch in that ninth inning? You know, we'll see. Might have to throw them into the fire. Um, Marco Sass, any good hitters left in free agency? Yeah, Tommy Pham, J.D. Martinez is out there, but I don't know how great of a fit that is for the Padres. He, It's not like he's going to play every day in the field. Manny already has that DH spot right now. It's a good bat, no doubt, but he's probably going to be commanding a lot of money on a one-year deal, like one year. I don't know. What, what is he asking for? 14, 15 mil, maybe? Because maybe? you're because he's J.D. Martinez? I don't know how that's the best fit for the Padres. All right, I think that's going to do it here. Do I have any more Super Chats? I don't want to miss any Super Chats. I don't think so. Okay, that's going to do it. Talking for hours, episode 572. Almost two hours of Padres talk. Thank you all so much for the time. I really do appreciate it. Over 100 people in here pretty much the entire time. 
great community of Padres fans. I hope everyone is in a better mood today than they woke up because of the state of the San Diego Padres. Dylan Cease is officially a Padre. It's going to be an exciting season. Hopefully, fans got you guys got more excited about this Padre season than you already were. And there's going to be a lot to talk about. So stay tuned on this channel uh, at Talking Friars on social media. Thank you for listening on the podcast platform. I'm not forgetting you guys if you're listening there. I appreciate the support. Definitely appreciate it. Um, have a great rest of your night. See ya. Thank you.